The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Teams have one. Olympic gold medalists have one, too. Even the world's top achievers have one. What am I talking about? A personal coach. How much more effective would you be if you had your own personal coach to motivate you, keep you accountable, and give you what you need to succeed on a weekly basis? Well, for the next hour, you have just that. You are tuned into The Potentialist, empowering people to reach their greatest potential with your host, Dion Jordan. Hello and welcome to the broadcast. You are tuned into The Potentialist, empowering people to reach their greatest potential. And I'm your host and self-proclaimed personal success coach, Dion Jordan. And today, we're going to help you eliminate that gap that exists between where you are and where you want to be. For today's topic is all about not sweating the small stuff. How to stop those little things from driving you crazy, and more importantly, how to take these small things that just irritate you or frustrate you and use them as vitamins to help you grow. It is amazing. We can use everything, every frustration, every failure, everything that irritated you in the past is really going to be a type of vitamin or mineral that you can use to help you grow stronger, to help you become better and reach your greatest goals. And that's the topic for today. You know, life gives us measuring sticks to track our progress. You know, one of the things to think about is everybody has problems. But a good measuring stick is, do you still have the same problems that you had last year? I mean, really, do you have the same New Year's resolutions that you make year after year after year? Do you keep promising yourself that this is the year I'm going to get healthy? This is the year I'm going to get better. This is the year I'm going to get out of debt. This is the year that I'm going to stop this habit or start this old habit. And so what happens is when the years go by and we realize that we have the same problems that we had last year, it's a measuring stick of how much we're growing, how much we're maturing, and how better we're getting or how better we're not getting. And just like anything else, just like the problems that we have, the little things that used to bug you shouldn't bug you anymore. You know what that's called? That's called maturing. Many of us do it physically, but we just don't do it emotionally or mentally. And what we need to learn to do is we need to learn not just to grow physically, but emotionally. I mean, those little things that used to bother you shouldn't bother you as much as what it used to, if not at all. Once again, let me quote the greatest book that I've ever read. It says that when I was a child, I used to think like a child. I used to reason as a child. But when I became a man, I put those childish things away. And so the question now is, have we done that? Have we stopped with the little, you know, pit peeves that used to bother us so much? The little things that we used to do or that used to irritate us? Or do we still allow those things to eat us? I like the example that Jim Rohn uses. You know, Jim Rohn says that, you know, life gives us or life requires of us that we make reasonable growth in a reasonable amount of time. He uses the example. That's why you can't fit in those fourth grade chairs anymore. Because you weren't supposed to stay in the fourth grade. You were supposed to grow not just physically, but emotionally as well. And so taking that same concept, are we growing? And what we're going to do is we're going to take this small stuff, these things that we shouldn't sweat, these things that irritate us and bother us and hinder us from growing, and we're going to use it for a measuring tool to find out how better are we today than what we used to be. Because the key in personal development really is growth. 
And humans are the only life form that will settle for less than they possibly can. Did you know all others strive for its maximum potential? A tree. A tree will grow as high as a tree possibly can. A cheetah. A cheetah will run as fast as it possibly can. Humans, not us. The only thing we will do is we will grow as tall as we possibly can, but we have no control of that. Everything else that we can control, we don't always give it our best. We don't do our best. You know, and because we don't give it our best or do our best, we never really have the opportunity to reach our greatest potential. So what we want to do is we want to change all that. We want to make the change needed that, to allow us to reach our greatest potential. And I'm going to show you today that how not sweating the small stuff, recognizing what that small stuff is, recognizing that we all have a lot of little things that, that irritate us, a lot of little things that, that, that stop us from growing mentally and emotionally. If we can identify these things, turn these things around, turn them into the vitamins that I'm talking about, we could realize that we could use these to help us grow and help us reach our greatest potential. And it all starts off with not sweating the small stuff. Matter of fact, let me tell a, a quick story. There was a group of alumni highly established in their careers. They got together to visit their old university professor. I mean, they would do this once a year. They would come back from their high-end jobs and their nice neighborhoods and the places they lived, and they would all come together once a year to, to meet their professor, the class that they shared together, just to share old times and kind of get caught up with what was going on in their life. Well, the conversation soon turned into complaints about stress in their work and in their everyday life. And, you know, the professor kind of sat there and, you know, kind of listened and, you know, didn't chime in too much. But just listen as everyone, all of a sudden, all these successful people started complaining about life and work. So after about an hour, he offered his guests some coffee. So he got up and he went into the kitchen. And as he was preparing the kitchen, he pulled out a tray and he went in his cupboards and he started pulling out these coffee mugs all different kinds of coffee mugs. Some were plastic, some were glass. He even pulled out some crystal ones. Some were plain looking, some were expensive looking, some were very nice, some were just, you know, ordinary. He put them all on the tray, he put the coffee on the tray, and he goes back to where his guests are. And as soon as he gets there, the guests are still talking. Conversation is still around the same complaints and little things going on in work and in life. And he sits down, he puts the coffee in the middle of the table with all the cups, and he offers his guests the coffee. Well, you can imagine what happened next. Soon, all the guests, the past students, went and started grabbing coffee mugs, trying to find the one that they wanted. And once they grabbed their coffee mugs, they went ahead and they poured their coffee, and they sat back and started sipping on their coffee. This was the only moment, this was the only time they had stopped complaining. Why did they stop complaining? Just to enjoy the coffee. And while he was sitting back watching him enjoy the coffee, coffee and, and, and sipping it, he started to smile. And then he simply said this. Once all the students had everything, he said, if you notice, all the nice looking, expensive cups have been taken up. You left behind all the plain and cheaper ones. And while it's normal for you to want the best for yourself, I promise you this, this is the source of your problems and your stress. Be assured that the cup itself adds no quality to the coffee that you're drinking. In most cases, it's just more expensive, and in some cases, it even hides what you drink. But the cup that you're drinking out of, it doesn't make the coffee taste any better. It doesn't make it go down any smoother. But still, you chose the most expensive and the best, and not only that, after you got your coffee mug, you started comparing your coffee mug to everybody else's coffee mug. Now, consider this. Life is like the coffee. The jobs, the money, the position, society, those are the cups. They're just tools that we use to hold and contain life. And the type of cup 
has no definite, um, no definite impact on the taste of the quality of life or the coffee itself. Sometimes by just concentrating on the cup, we fail to enjoy the coffee. Savor the coffee, not the cups. The happiest people don't have the best of everything. They just make the best of everything. When he shared that with them, they got it. They realized that they were focusing on all the things that weren't the most important in their life. And I think we have a habit of doing the same thing. We have a habit of concentrating on things and sweating the small stuff and never really taking time to find out what's the most important thing. What was more important, having a nice cup or drinking the coffee? By all means, drinking the coffee. So what's most important, living the life that you want to live or trying to impress other people so they think that you're living a great life? And many times we are just sweating the small stuff and not realizing that the most important thing in life is that which we ignore the most. In today's lesson, in today's 45-minute conversation that we have left, we're going to talk about not just not sweating the small stuff, but also identifying what the big stuff is. We're going to learn how to eliminate the stress of everyday life and not let those crazy things that happen from time to time draw us down and pull us away from our greatest goal rather than push us and stimulate us to reach our greatest goal. One of the greatest quotes that I ever heard when it comes to reaching your own greatest potential is this. It came from Michael Jordan. I I've shared it once before. And that is, you don't look or measure your own success by what other people have, by what other people have done. But you measure your own success by your own potential. What is it that you can do? How great can you be? How tall can you grow? How smart can you be? How loving and kind can you be? These are the things that are the true measurement of success. But when we get off track and start looking at what other people are saying and other people are doing, that by no means draws us off track. One last thing before we go into commercial break is we are in our ninth show of The Potentialist. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you a little foresight, a little idea of what's to come. Although today we're talking about sweating the small stuff, one of the biggest issues that people have are often around financial uh, stresses. Next week, we're having our special guest, David Bell, the, 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 the money guru, the guy who knows not just how to get out of debt, but also to help you, you know, obtain some wealth. He's going to join us next week and, and, and help us in mastering our money. Following that, we're going to have uh, revisit our talk on love and respect. And then once again, coming in March, we're going to have the opportunity to further the conversation around reaching your greatest potential with special guest Erica Gilchrist, who is the unstoppable woman. All of these topics, all these shows are guaranteed to do one thing, help you eliminate the gap that exists between where you are and where you want to be. But when we get back, let's talk about how to not sweat the small stuff and realize it's all small stuff. You're listening to The Potentialist on Voice America, and we'll be right back. News. Opinion. Your voice counts. Call toll-free 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. VoiceAmerica.com. Are you in need of the perfect speaker for your next event? Allow the potentialist, Dion Jordan, to help your audience reach its greatest potential. His lively and engaging presentations are filled with the perfect combination of humor, content, and motivation. Your audience will love Dion's energy, and you'll love the positive impact he makes. Visit DionJordan.com for Dion's latest keynotes, workshops, or live events, or bring the potentialist to your business, organization, or college. Call Dion Jordan now at 1-877-572-1704. That's 1-877-572-1704. Or visit www.dionjordan.com. Realize your true potential. Call 1-877-572-1704 or visit dionjordan.com today. 
Now there's a new destination for video content, voiceamerica.tv, just like our radio channels and so much more. Voice America Variety, Health and Wellness, Business, Sports, Green Talk, Power Up Motorsports, and 7th Wave Network now have their own video channel components. Plus, check out exclusive programming, including movies, music, educational courses, science and history, current events, and short features. High-definition, premier-quality programs available 24-7, voiceamerica.tv. If you think you've seen online TV like this before, let us surprise you streaming live the leader in internet talk radio voiceamerica.com you are listening to the potentialist empowering people to reach their greatest potential with motivational speaker dion jordan if you have a question or comment for the show please send an email to the potentialist at dionjordan.com that's the potentialist at DionJordan.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Once again, we're talking about not sweating the small stuff. And more importantly, how to take these small things and use them as vitamins to help us to grow. Well, one of the best advice that I could give when it comes to not sweating the small stuff, it's all around mindset. One of the themes that I've always tried to share is it's all about what you believe. Because what you believe becomes a reality in your own mind and in your own life. And so when considering not swaying the small stuff, not getting stressed, not letting those little things bother you over time, one of the greatest things you can do. Now, you may not like this. (laughs) This may not sound good when it first comes out. But I promise you, this is one of the best things that you can do to propel you to reach your greatest potential and growth. And that is, you've got to condense all the blame into one. Everything that irritates you, everything that bothers you, you need to condense it all into one thing. And this is what the one thing is. It's your fault. Whenever something bad happens, you need to consider that that it's your fault. That it's bothering you because there's something wrong with you. Because there's something that you've done or there's something that you haven't done or whatever the case might be. It's time to take the blame off everybody else and off everything else. But as soon as you start holding yourself accountable, as soon as you start realizing that it has a lot more to do with you and how you're processing things and and what you're telling yourself about certain things and how you're handling things, the more control you have of fixing this and, and the more control you have of getting better. Now, this might sound strange to start off with. Because certain things, you know, may not be your fault. Let, let's use driving. You're driving down the street. Someone cuts in front of you and you get angry. Now, now, now how is that your fault? Well, let's think about that for a minute. Who got angry? You, you got angry. Now, they might have done something. But remember, the only thing that could come out of you is something that's already in there. <laughs> so you can't always blame that. They didn't throw anger in you. They, they didn't give you the pill of anger when they cut in front of you. Anger was already something that, you know, that you stirred up through your own conversation. Because I promise, if you saw that car was about to crash into a pole and it had to swerve in front of you, you might be a little more sympathetic. You may not be angry. You might be thankful. And so all of a sudden, you have to realize that this has a lot to do with you. Now, let me tell you how I learned the lesson. I I learned the lesson the hard way. There there are several things that, that, that I don't like that irritate me. And one of the things that probably irritate me when it comes to swaying the small stuff is think like waiting in line. I hate waiting in line. I don't care if it's traffic. I don't care if it's the DMV. I don't even like waiting in the grocery line. I I hate red lights. And and, and the reason being is, according to me, I've only got so many seconds to live. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I've only got so many minutes on this earth. And I cannot afford to sit there and do nothing. I can't afford just to wait for the light to change. I can't just sit here and and, and wait in line at the DMV. I've got to go out and do something because my life is ending. That is probably one of my biggest pet peeves on earth is waiting. But I've learned how to be patient. I've learned how to turn that around. And, and, And it took several things. For example, if I'm driving someplace and I'm late and I'm, you know, and there's a car in front of me driving slow. Whose fault is that, that, that I'm late now? Is it the car in front of me that's driving slow, or is it my fault? Well, according to my own theory, it's my fault. 
And it's not his fault that he's driving slow. It's not his fault that he left on time or left early to the point where he could drive any speed he wants to. I should have left early. I could have took a different route. There are so many things that I could have done. But it's so much easier just to blame somebody else. But as soon as you start pointing the finger inward at yourself, then you realize, okay, wait a minute. Now, this is something I can control. This is something that I can change. And one thing we don't like to do, we don't like to point fingers at ourselves. We like to be able to blame other people for our problems. And so the key is, yeah, I'm sitting in traffic. I'm late. This car in front of me driving slow. That's my fault. I need to leave earlier. I need to find a different route. I need to make the change, not the person in front of me. The other thing that really kind of turned it around for me one day is I was stuck in traffic. I mean, this traffic was bad, and I was just so mad at whoever was causing all this traffic. Whatever the problem was, I mean, I was blaming everybody on earth but myself about this traffic. And about an hour later, we kept moving forward. And an hour later, we kept moving forward, and I was still complaining. I was still hot. I mean, I hate to admit it, but I think I was even upset at God for some reason because the place I had to go, I felt like was just important, and he wanted me there. You know, So I was just blaming anybody and everybody. Then the closer I got, I saw the ambulance. Then I saw someone clinging for their life and thought to myself, wow, how much would they rather be where I am than be where they are right now? Change me. Turn me around. I can sit in traffic now, and, and, and rather than sit in traffic and complain and sit in traffic and, 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 and be mad that I'm in traffic, I can sit in traffic and pray that whatever the situation, who's ever stuck on the side of the road, who's ever been in the car accident, whatever the situation is, that it gets better. And you know what I've done because I, do, I made that change? I got better. I grew. I'm better than what I was before. But I took 100% responsibility for that. And the same thing for you. So the key is whatever happens, you have to come to the conclusion that somehow, some way, it's your fault. Take responsibility for it. Because once you do that, then you're going to have a chance to grow. Now, I'll be honest with you. The average person won't do this. The average person would just say, no, it doesn't work like that. You don't know my situation. It really is their fault. It really is because of them. Hey, we're going to talk a little bit more, but remember this also. Your response is your responsibility. That's number two. Number one is whatever happens, you know, that's your fault. Number two, your response is your responsibility. You, other people can't cause you to be the way they are. They could just reveal the way that you are. Let me say that again. Other people don't cause you to be who you are. Sometimes they just reveal who you are. If you're a grumpy person and a person makes you upset, all that's going to do is just show the grumpiness that was already inside. If you're a kind person, someone could be mean to you, and guess what? The kindness is still going to come out. It's just, it's just the way it is. And so you can't blame other people for making you mad, or, or you can't blame other people for making you loving. You are who you are. You have a choice in this. Your response is 100% your responsibility. And sometimes you have to ask yourself, what would you rather be, right or happy? Sometimes you can't be both. Sometimes that ego gets in our way, and we just want to be right all the time. We just want to be the ones to, you know, to, to, to prove everybody else wrong. And then in the result, because of that, sometimes we get all stressed out. We get upset because we're not changing people. People aren't seeing us the way we want to be seen. And sometimes it's not a matter of being right. You know, it's not a matter of, you know, of who wins. You have to ask yourself, what's in your cup? You know, you know, what kind of cup are you holding? And, and, and what's the most important thing that's in there? And sometimes that happiness, sometimes that relationship, sometimes that is the most important thing. And so here's my challenge. My challenge for you is this. Why is it bothering you? Whatever that small stuff is, why is it getting you? What's wrong with you to the point that that bugs you? And when I say what's wrong with you, that doesn't mean that something in you is, is, is ill. In other words, if, if something is bothering you, it might be bothering you because you want the best for yourself. And whatever the situation is, it's not allowing you to, to reach your greatest. It could happen. It might be the relationship. You might want the relationship to work, but the person keeps doing stuff and just irritates you. And that's why you're upset because you want it to work. But for some reason, it's not working. And that's why you're upset. But, what, but if that's the case, you have to realize there's something wrong inside you because you're the one that gets upset my pops <laughs> he broke this down for me one day i forgot what the what the situation was but i was upset at pops and he told me he said remember this if you're mad that's not my problem that's your problem and i thought about that and i was like that's true because my dad's gonna go off with his day he's gonna be fine and he's gonna have a good day and all's gonna be well and i'm gonna sit here all upset 
So whose problem is it? It's, it's my problem. You know, and we have to realize that, that a lot of these things that we're, that we're sweating, it's our own personal problem. We have to fix it. Even if somebody else seems like they caused it, once again, all they're doing is revealing what's already inside. So the question that I have for you, the challenge that, that I have for you here is not just what's bothering you, but why is it bothering you? What can you learn about yourself? How can you better yourself in finding out what it is that, that, that's bothering you? What's going on in your own life? that this bugs you. Let's go back to me waiting in line. I, I know what it was. With me waiting in line, that's like I feel like my life is drifting away. So what did I have to do to make this switch? What did I have to do to make this change, to grow, to get better? It was simple. I had to find out how to pass time. I had to find out how to take, how to take advantage of a red light. There's a game that I play now at red lights that, that, that helps me get smarter. Can, can you believe that? <laughs> there, there's a quoting game that I do. If I hit a red light, I'm going to pick a theme and see how many quotes can I come up with around this theme. Positive quotes. I've always been a quote kind of guy. I've learned the same thing in, in, in waiting in line, waiting for my wife while she's getting ready, which could take hours at a time. Rather than me get frustrated, I change my mindset and, and I tell myself, you know what, she's taking so long because she's getting ready for me. She, she wants to look beautiful for me, you know what I mean? So whatever the case might be, I've learned how to do one of the greatest things and that is how to pass time in a positive way. So I'm not just sitting there dying. Rather that I'm sitting there and I'm growing. I'm sitting there and I'm getting better. That's how I just turned it around. So the question is, what about you? What can you do and how can you do it to have the opportunity to turn it around? Number three, get in the habit of chewing, choosing the best possibilities instead of worrying about the worst ones. Let me tell you, something about um, sweating the small stuff is we just begin to worry and we begin to stress out over things that may not even happen over things that, you know, won't even come true. But we just have a habit of, of, of rushing, stressing, and sweating the small stuff. Walter Hagen said it nice. He said, don't hurry and don't worry. You're only here for a short visit. So don't forget to stop and smell the flowers. Dale Carnegie, he said, if only the people who worry about their liabilities would think about the riches that they do possess, they'd stop worrying. And then, of course, the famous guy named Anonymous. <laughs> Anonymous says, you can't change the past, but you can ruin your present by worrying about your future. Wow. I like that one. So here's the last bit of advice. Try this. Frame every disaster with this question. Will anybody care about this in a year? I mean, honestly. The, the little things that you sweat, ask yourself, will this even matter to me in the next month or two? And if it doesn't, it's not worth your emotions. Worrying is one of the worst emotions I could think of. It is just a waste of, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't make anything better. And, and more importantly, it stops the creative juices from flowing, from trying to find a way to fix something because we sit there in worry. So the key now is, remember this, choose the best possibility. There's always, you always have choices. There's always choices. Choose the best one and have enough faith in yourself to believe that things are going to work out on your behalf. All right? You, you almost have to believe that you are like destiny's little darling and, and, and that things are going to work out for you. Remember, it's what you believe because it's what you believe that, that dictates your movements. It's what dictates your actions. Belief is the one thing that could change your circumstance quicker than anything else. And then finally, before we go to commercial break, watch out for that ego. That ego will get you in trouble. That, that ego you know, will give you thoughts and feelings and actions to stop you, to give you the anxiety and the fear and, and the doubt. Ego by itself will get in its way. We need to go to commercial break. When we come back, I'm going to talk a little more about the trouble of ego and also some great steps that you can do not to sweat the small stuff. You're listening to The Potentialist on Voice America, and we'll be right back. Talk, talk, talk. 
That's all we do is talk. If you'd like to talk, call us toll-free right now at 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. Are you in need of the perfect speaker for your next event? Allow the potentialist Dion Jordan to help your audience reach its greatest potential. His lively and engaging presentations are filled with the perfect combination of humor, content, and motivation. Your audience will love Dion's energy, and you'll love the positive impact he makes. Visit DionJordan.com for Dion's latest keynotes, workshops, or live events, or bring the potentialist to your business, organization, or college. Call Dion Jordan now at 1-877-572-1704. That's 1-877-572-1704. Or visit www.dionjordan.com. Realize your true potential. Call 1-877-572-1704 or visit dionjordan.com today. The latest business information is made simple with the Voice America Business Network. The professionals in the business world bring you live talk radio shows featuring an array of business topics, strategies for building wealth, sales and marketing, stock trading, investing, and business technology. Voice America business hosts are professionals in their fields and bring to the airwaves weekly business discussions that offer up-to-date information, advice, and education. The Voice America Business Network, the bottom line in business talk. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com You are listening to The Potentialist, empowering people to reach their greatest potential with motivational speaker Dion Jordan. If you have a question or comment for the show, please send an email to thepotentialist at dionjordan.com. That's the potentialist at DionJordan.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Once again, we're talking about not sweating the small stuff. Before we went to commercial break, I was trying to cram in there as quickly as I could a little something about being free from the grip of ego. You know, there is much more to life than merely serving your ego. You know, those things that seem like failures to the ego are pure opportunities for raising your awareness to a higher, more fulfilling levels. Experiences that your ego would never allow you to connect with are sincerely the feelings of your own desires. So what happens is this. Sometimes ego gets in the way and ego will stop you from trying something you want to try because you're afraid to fail and your ego just can't take failure. Feelings, thoughts, actions that go beyond yourself show who you truly are. Anxiety, fear, worry, and doubt are all devices that your ego uses to hold you back. My advice is this. Stop being a slave to your ego, and you are free to live without limits. By appealing to your ego and cooperating with it, others are always going to be in control of your life. Yet, when you let go of your ego's concern, you can freely live to fulfill your own true purpose. So the idea is this. When you feel ego is bubbling up, know this, that ego right then and there, the moment that it shows up, it's trying to live for somebody else more than helping you reach your greatest potential. So one of the things that you might realize when you're sweating the small stuff is your ego might be a little stuck in there. But what I want to do is I want to share with you right now one of the greatest things that I've learned as far as not sweating the small stuff and also eliminating the stress of life itself. And that is this. You've got to ask yourself the question, what is really the most important things or what are the most important things in your life? I mean, when it's all said and done. If you had to narrow it down to to three things, and three things might be a lot. There there shouldn't be a whole lot. But what are the most important things in your life? Now, let me give an example of some things that um, that usually rank around the top. If you're a person of faith, your relationship with God. All right, that 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 might that might be one of one of the most important things. When all said is when all said is done. That, that, that you want to know that, that, that God was pleased with your life. For somebody else, 
something else that might be on top of the list is their family. That when they walk in the door, that their family still loves them. That's it. I mean, maybe just those two things alone, most important thing. For somebody else, it, it might be their work. It might be that, that I'm still working, that I'm still living a happy life or, or whatever the case might be. But what you must do is you got to take time out and find out what those things are because everything else is small stuff. Those are the, that is the, you have to know what the main things are so you can better identify what the smaller things are. And, and we need to stop worrying about the small stuff and concentrate on the big stuff. Let me, let me give you an example. In fact, Billy Joel stressed this point in an interview. As you know, Billy Joel is one of the most successful singer, songwriters, you know, of our time. During the 1980s alone, uh, Billy Joel recorded an astounding 20 top 40 hits, nine which reached top 10 status. He received all these awards, Male Artist of the Year, records, you know, Best Recording Song of the Year, Album of the Year. I mean, he's just, you know, a great singer. So anyone who's listening to this who's over the age of 30, <laughs> you pretty much know who Billy Joel is. He was also inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In short, you couldn't ask for a more successful uh, life than this musician right here. However... Everything is not always as it seems. And such is the case with Billy Joel, because this is what he said. He said, the happiest times in my life were when my relationships were going well. But in my whole life, I haven't met the person that I can sustain a relationship with yet. I am so discontent about that. I'm angry with myself. I have regrets. You don't get hugged by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And you don't have children with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I want everyone, I want what everybody else has. To love, to be loved, and to have a family. This is a point I continue stress with myself. As I push towards my music goals, I realize what's most important. That's what Billy Joel shared. So basically what he was saying is the most important thing to him was relationship. But you know what he was concentrating on? Everything else. And between everything that he really wanted, music wasn't even on the top of his list. It was his relationship. And so the advice I try to give you is when you stop and realize what it is that's the most important thing, when anything else happens, good or bad, all you have to do is filter it through the most important things. So... For example, if, if yours is, and I'm just, you know, tossing two out there, if yours is your relationship with God and also your relationship with your family, does traffic really matter? It doesn't really matter. Does, does, you know, even on the job, people get on your nerve on the job, and you know you have to spend so much time on the job, but you sit back and say, you know what, at the end of the day, this is not what matters most to me. At the end of the day, when I walk through that door, that, that my kids still think I'm the greatest man alive. That, 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 that my wife, when she sees me, she's still in love. What, you know, whatever those things are, you, those are the things you sit back and say, those are the things that are most, and everything else is just the small stuff. I'm reminded of, of, of a letter that, that a guy got once, and for him, one of the most important things was, was God, was you know, living a life that he felt w w was pleasing because faith was big to him. And I can remember that... Uh, in, in the time that he had, that he felt like he had this letter. And this letter, it's pretty popular. You could actually find it on the internet if you look for it yourself. But it, but it was a letter from God, and, and, and it said this. And it's all about sweating the small stuff and what's really important. It says, it doesn't really matter what kind of car you drove, but how many people you drove who did not have transportation. It doesn't matter the square footage of your house, but how many people did you welcome into your home? You know, it doesn't matter about the clothes that you have in your closet, but how many people did you actually help clothe? You know, it doesn't matter, you know, what your highest salary was, but did you compromise your character to obtain it? You know, it doesn't matter how many friends you had, but how many people to whom were you a friend? It doesn't matter your job title or, or, or the jobs that you perform, but did you provide Form those jobs to the best of your abilities. You know, it doesn't even matter what neighborhood you live in, but did you treat everybody 
like a neighbor. You know, it, it doesn't matter what your social status is, but did you have the kind of class that, 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 that showed people that you cared? It doesn't matter the material possessions you had, but were you dictated by it? Was it your material blessings that defined you? You know, it doesn't matter how much overtime you worked, but if your overtime, was it for yourself or was it for your family? You know, it, it doesn't matter how many promotions you received, but how did you help promote others? What did you do for somebody else? You know, it doesn't matter what you did to help yourself as much as maybe what did you do to kind of help somebody else out? And then finally, it doesn't matter what you did to protect your rights, but what did you do to help to protect the rights of a child or someone less fortunate than you? You know what that was? That was just an opportunity to stop and realize, hey, what's really the most important thing? I mean, when it's all said and done, I want to make sure that I've done way more than I at least have said. So to wrap up just a section of it all, stop and consider these four things. Number one, take responsibility. of Whatever happens, whatever takes place, remember that we must take responsibility and actually say, you know what, that, hey, it's my fault. So number one, everything that bothers you has to deal with you. Number two, your response is 100% your responsibility. And number three, just get into the habit of choosing the best possibilities instead of worrying about the worst ones. You always have a choice. You can sit there and worry and complain, or you can do something about it. You can make a change. You can get up. You can make it better. Then, of course, the other one I share with you is, you know, free yourself from the ego. Because you may think, hey, ego is something good. Ego is something that kind of stands out and makes you stand head and shoulders above the rest. But it's not true. Ego is actually the one that says, I'm more worried about impressing everybody else than I am impressing myself and reaching my greatest potential. And then finally, last but not least, is recognize what is the most important thing to you. The most important thing in your life, because when it's all said and done, everything else is small stuff. Everything else that people say, everything else that people do, whatever happens to you, whatever happens around you, it's small stuff. As long as you've identified what is the most important thing and you keep that intact. Worrying by itself, wasted emotion. Stress itself, we know, will cause types of illness and diseases that we can't avoid. But the key is now, how can I take these irritations? How can I take these frustrations? How can I take that straw that keeps on getting on this camel's back and, and, and turn these around, use them for vitamins, change my belief? Change the way I'm handling things. Change the way that I'm processing things and using this to help me reach my greatest potential. Listen, we're about to go to commercial break. But when we come back from commercial break, I'm going to share with you uh, 10 of the greatest world-class beliefs that you could have. Three things that you can remind yourself of that will help you not sweat the small stuff and also reach your greatest potential. And then close out with a story that I love to share. You're listening to The Potentialist on Voice America, and we'll be right back. News. Opinion. Your voice counts. Call toll-free 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. VoiceAmerica.com. Are you in need of the perfect speaker for your next event? Allow the potentialist, Dion Jordan, to help your audience reach its greatest potential. His lively and engaging presentations are filled with the perfect combination of humor, content, and motivation. Your audience will love Dion's energy, and you'll love the positive impact he makes. Visit DionJordan.com for Dion's latest keynotes, workshops, or live events. Or bring the potentialist to your business, organization, or college. Call Dion Jordan now at 1-877-572-1704. That's 1-877-572-1704. Or visit www.dionjordan.com. Realize your true potential. Call 1-877-572-1704 or visit dionjordan.com today. 
To perform at your maximum potential, you need to have all aspects of your life working properly. On mind, brain, and body, Dr. Michael John Kell will bring you honest, open discussions concerning your physical, mental, and financial health. If you're ready to find purpose and meaning in your life, tune in to Mind, Brain, and Body every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific. Mind, Brain, and Body on Voice America Health and Wellness. Radio dedicated to your health, wealth, wisdom, and purpose. Stimulating talk it gets those synapses in the brain inspired really fast. All the time. The number one internet talk station where your opinion counts. VoiceAmerica.com. You are listening to The Potentialist, empowering people to reach their greatest potential with motivational speaker Dion Jordan. If you have a question or comment for the show, please send an email to thepotentialist at dionjordan.com. That's the potentialist at DionJordan.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Once again, we're talking about not sweating the small stuff, but taking these small things and using them as vitamins to help us grow and help us become better. Because like Jim Rohn says, in order for things to get better, we must get better. And so before the commercial break, I promise you that I will share with you some world-class beliefs. Because early on in our conversation, I shared with you that it's really our beliefs. It's, it's, it's how we process things. It's, it's what we truly believe that makes all the difference on how far we can go, how much we can make, how much we can grow. You know, our possibilities and the ability to reach our potential all boils down to our beliefs. So what I'd like to do now is share 10 world-class beliefs. Now, you might ask, where do these world-class beliefs come from? These world-class beliefs came from world-class athletes, world-class successful business owners. These are ones that, that, that had a goal and reached their goals. And these are the ones that not only became successful in their occupation, but they became successful in their life, in, in their home life, in their ambitions. And what I've been able to do is to, to accumulate these and, and put these together as, as the top 10. So here are top 10 beliefs that we should carry. Number one is this. I cannot fail. I can only learn and grow. That's a belief. You've got to believe that. You've got to believe that failure is not an option as long as you've learned from it. Because if you learn from it, what you've done now, you are now a step closer to succeed. You got to take under consideration someone like uh, Thomas Edison, who when he was trying to, you know, in invent that light bulb, how many times he messed up. But every time he messed up, he was a step closer. He messed up thousands of times, thousands among thousands of times. But each time, step closer to reach success. Number one, you cannot fail. You can only learn and grow. Number two is everything happens for a reason. It is so much easier if you just believe this, that everything happens for a reason. Now, tr truth be told, uh, some of the reasons might be bad reasons. You know, it might be a result of bad choices, but, it, but it's happened for a reason. People act a certain way for a reason. Sometimes we have to accept that and try to understand it. Sometimes put ourselves in their shoes that we might have a better understanding. Don't feel like, you know, that it just happened. It was just luck. No, there's no such thing as luck. If, if you go bowling and you get 20 strikes in a row, I'm telling you, if you keep bowling the ball the same way and hitting the pins that are set up the same way, you're going to get the same result. There's no such thing as luck. Everything happens for a reason. Number three is a great one. Know this. All you can do is all that you can do. Let me say that again. All you can do is all you can do. Let me put it another way. You can't, you, you, you can do anything. You just can't do everything. I mean, you, you can't take on everything at once. I was, uh, you know, sitting at the table uh, just yesterday eating breakfast with my family. And my, uh, my daughter asked me, because she thinks I'm the strongest guy in the world. She goes, uh, Daddy, can you lift up this house? And I said, yes, I can lift up the whole house. I can do it one brick at a time. But eventually, each brick, each little, you know, each little thing that, that built this house, I could pick up. And in the end, yeah. In, in, in a strange way, I could do it. Why? You can do anything. You just can't do everything. But it's put like this. All you can do is all you can do. Do the best you can and see what happens. Number four, every experience makes you stronger. Everything you go through. I said early on that I don't care what the frustration is. I don't care what the obstacle is. You can use it. 
the whole world, the entire earth, everything around you is made and created to make you stronger, to make you better. But you've got to use it. I could put weights in front of you, but unless you start lifting them, they're going to do no good for you. I could put books in front of you. Unless you read them, you're not going to get any smarter. Life is putting all these experiences, all these opportunities around you, but you've got to take advantage of them. Otherwise, you're missing out. So number four, every experience is, is, is there to make you stronger. Number five, catch this and, and, and you're halfway home. Happiness is a choice. You choose. It's all about how you process things. It's all about what you're telling yourself. It's all about what you believe. But know this, happiness is a choice. Which goes to number six, happiness is a state of mind. <clears throat> it's, it's not just how you feel, but it's also how you think. Number seven, people are inherently good. You got to realize that. I know it doesn't seem like that all the time. I mean, you might have some, you know, some in-laws or some outlaws or whatever you want, might want to call them. And you might say to yourself, no, these people are not kind people. No, everybody is doing the best they can with what they know. Everybody's doing the best they can from the experiences that they had. You just have to believe that everybody is inherently good. It's up to us to try to find the good in everybody else. All these things will help you not sweat the small stuff. And number eight, the world is a beautiful place. That's a world-class belief. They believe that. They go out in the world and know, you know, that's a blessing just to be out there. You know, I'll wake up in the morning and say to myself, I am so glad I am standing six feet on the ground and not six feet under it. I'm in the world. I'm in the land of the living. And I'm going to take advantage of the moments that I have. The world is a beautiful place. Number nine, this is great. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. It takes persistence. Sometimes it, it takes a, a, a change of, of strategy, but anything is possible. Last week, I shared about three keys that can open like any door. If you didn't listen to last week's show, I, I encourage you to do so. But know this, anything is possible. And number 10, success is a choice. You choose. You, you can choose to be successful. You can choose to be average, or you can choose to be mediocre. It's your choice. And every day you make that choice. Every time you don't get up when you could get up, you've made a choice. Every time you decide to sit down and do nothing when you could have did something, you're making a choice. Success is a choice. So quickly, the top 10, I cannot fail. I can only learn and grow. Everything happens for a reason. All I can do is all I can do. Every experience makes me stronger. Happiness is a choice. Happiness is a state of mind. People are inherently good. The world is a beautiful place. Anything is possible. And success is a choice. Learn these things and you will soon find out that people will not have a chance to get your goat. You ever wonder where that term came from? Don't let somebody get your goat. You know, race horses are, are, are very high strung animals. And so you know what they used to do is they used to get goats and, and use them as companions to keep the race horse, you know, calm. Well, someone who wanted to fix the race would slip in the barn the night before and they would steal their goat. And when they steal their goat, you know, they would get upset and, and, the, and the horses would get more distracted. And so that's where the term came from. You know, don't let somebody steal your goat. Well, or don't let somebody get your goat. Well, there's also a great story that goes with goats. It's a, it's a, it's a popular story that usually goes around the faith community, but it's, I think it's a good wrap up for today's show. And the story is told of a prized goat that fell into an old well. And the farmer realized that this goat was in the well and tried to rescue it with a rope, but he was unsuccessful. So he decided to give up on the goat. And instead, he started just, you know, putting dirt, shoveling dirt on top of the goat. He didn't realize that he had just given up on that goat. But that stubborn goat never gave up on itself. He had ambition, and he was about to live. So the farmer would shovel this dirt in the well, you know, to try to cover up the goat. And when the dirt hit the goat's back, you know what the goat would do? He would just shake it off him. And then as soon as he shook it off, he, he would pack it down under his feet. And the farmer would keep on shoveling dirt and shoveling dirt, and the goat would keep on just shaking it off his, you know, back, and then he'd just put it under his feet and just start packing it under his feet. Well, after a while... The more that the farmer was trying to bury this goat, the more the goat was just shaking it off and, and pounding under his feet. And the goat was getting higher and higher. He was building himself a mound. 
He's like, this is great. Keep on throwing it. You know, the, 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 the farmer gave up. The farmer was trying to bury the guy. The farmer was trying to say, you know, it's over. Just, just die. But the ghost said, no, I'm using everything you're throwing at me. I'm using everything you're putting on my back. It's not going to weigh me down. It's going to lift me up. And sooner or later, that goat was able to jump out of there and still be the prized goat that he knew that he should be. Listen, people are going to throw stuff at you all the time. You, you've got a choice. I mean, you can sweat the small stuff if you want to, or you could be like that goat and learn how to shake that off and use that to help you to rise to whatever it is that you want to do, to be whatever it is that you want to become. But what does it take? It takes a type of belief and, and a determination that, you know what, this is not going to get me. This is not going to keep me down. This is just going to be vitamins to make me stronger. All it's going to do is be throwing on my back. I'm going to shake it off. I'm going to put it under my feet, and it's going to rise me to the height and to the place that I want to go in life, and that is to reach my greatest potential. Listen, my name is Dion Jordan, branded as The Potentialist, and it's always my goal to help you reach all of your goals. So remember this. You may not always believe that things are possible, but deep down inside, there's always a possibility. There's always a chance for you to become better, for you to become greater. As long as you're still living, put your hand over your heart. As long as that ticker is still ticking, you still got a chance. You still got a reason to be here and you still have great things to do. And I wish you nothing but total success in all that you do. And remember, just because you can't see the air doesn't mean you stop breathing. And just because you can't see God doesn't mean you stop believing. God bless you and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please join Dion Jordan for another edition of The Potentialist. We'll be back again next Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management.